Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Africa Speaks. I'm Joy Doreen Bira and it's been a week filled with the missing plane conversation that is Air Algerie. But also countries Cameroon, Chad and Niger have joined the fight against Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria. All this and more on Web City. Flight 447 was more than 30,000 feet over the Atlantic. The storm shot up to more than 50,000 feet. The According to French President Francois Hollande, there are no survivors from the Air Algerie AH5017 passenger jet that crashed in Mali. Air traffic controllers lost contact with the plane early on Thursday after pilots reported severe storms. In Saharan Africa, powerful sandstorms, a product of that intertropical convergence zone. In space, 50 minutes after takeoff from Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. Almost half of the 116 people on board are believed to be French, including a family of 10. Burkina Faso authorities said the passenger list comprised 27 people from Burkina Faso, 51 French, 8 Lebanese, 6 Algerians, two from Luxembourg, five Canadians, four Germans, one Cameroonian, one Belgian, one Egyptian, one Ukrainian, one Swiss, one Nigerian, and one Malian. Nigeria's health minister has confirmed that a Liberian has died of Ebola in Lagos. This man, according to an international agency, is said to have collapsed on arrival at an airport in Lagos. Meanwhile, Sierra Leone has launched a hunt in its capital, Freetown, for a woman with Ebola forcibly removed from hospital by her relatives. Since February, more than 660 people have died of Ebola in West Africa, the world's deadliest outbreak to date. It began in southern Guinea and spread to Liberia and Sierra Leone. The case in Nigeria is the first in Africa's most populous country. Nigeria and three other states including Cameroon, Niger and Chad have pledged to speed up the creation of a 2,800 strong regional force to tackle militant Islamist group Boko Haram. The three countries have each agreed to put forward 700 troops from their nations to eradicate Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria. In May, the four countries whose borders meet at Lake Chad agreed to share intelligence and coordinate border security. Now, there comes a time when people work in a certain environment and choose to search for greener pastures. Some need new challenges and others just tired of working in the same place for long decide to quit and move on. And aside from the usual written resignation letters, people have come up with creative ways to shock their bosses with resignations. However, African countries are yet to catch up with this trend. Take a look. Excuse me, everybody. Derek, Jake, everyone. I got an announcement to make and I got my friends here to help me out. Guys, hit it! Shoo do 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 I am quitting this job today. Hey, hey, hey! I'm leaving. Even though I can't even start, you think we're gonna make it to the top and start the coffee shop?
Well, there we go. I think there's no African country that can tolerate all of that when you decide to resign in front of your boss and decide to sing and not just hand in a resignation letter. Well, it's now time for the platform and uh, we choose to go to Uganda. Last time we tried to, you know, talk about the Renzori killings in Western Uganda. We seem not to have had good network, but now we're going to revisit that very topic. And today our hashtag is Renzori killings. Are these killings tribal or there is something else we need to read out of the clashes in Western Uganda? And over 100 people, including attackers, policemen, civilians and soldiers, died and 125 suspects were detained in clashes that broke out in Western Uganda. And two weeks ago, President Museveni, in a press statement through Uganda Media Center, attributed the massive killings in Renzori region in Western Uganda to cultural greed. Members of parliament hailing from Renzori region region have now called for special investigations into the causes of the ongoing killings in Bundibujo, Kasese and Toroko districts as majority cast doubt on whether killings were instigated by tribal clashes. The woman member of parliament for Kasese district, Winfred Kiza, has dismissed the army and police consistent assertion that the killings were as a result of the ongoing tribal clashes. And she joins us now via phone to shed more light on a situation that continues to silently claim more lives. Good afternoon, uh, Winnie, and thank you so much for joining us on Africa Speaks. Uh, it's such an honor to have you online. Now, um, regarding the killings that we've seen in, in the western part of Uganda, what do you read out of the situation? Uh, thank you, Joy. And I want to let the listeners understand that the killings in Western Uganda, especially in the local, Kasese and the Bundesliga, are not mere tribal classes, and neither are they uh, out of greed of cultural institutions. If I may let everybody understand, this I would say is just a demonstration of people against the brutality and the negligence of the government of President Museveni. In Kasese, for example, we have tribes, that tribe we are intending to call it a tribal class, we have the Rakonzo people who were denied land, and land was given to another section of people called the Rakongora. Land was grabbed from them forcibly by government. Government forced people to sell their land to government so that they acquire it for action. And the people said no. They went to court, and the case was in their favor, but up to now, government has not given them back their land. Right. the video, for example, people are denied access to social services. They have paid long, long access to the services of the government. It is a particular crime that gets in service with the government. So people are paying people pay taxes to government and we have right to benefit from government just like any other person. So this, I just, I, I think it was a demonstration which was beyond the culture, which was beyond the cultural institution, which was beyond the understanding of the individual. But the people themselves demonstrated that dissatisfaction towards the government and instead of government brushing it off as a tribal war, they need to come down, and I'm, I, I, I'm glad that Parliament suggested that a special investigation needs to be conducted to find out why people can become violent, the message of attack, and the information, government, government, and the police. Right. Because when these people are going to be harassed, they are not to be they are not to be well, when you look when you look at the issues of and issues of 
Yes, and when you look at the situation and what the government has said, while the government is attributing this to uh, tribal clashes, uh, there seem to be a section of members of parliament who think that this could also be associated with the allied democratic forces, that is the ADF rebels, uh, who also broke war in the western part of, of, of Uganda, that is specifically in Kasese and Bundibuju districts. So what is your thinking towards that? Now, you know, it is true during the region, the people from the Indian region, the people from the Indian region, that they are aware they are remnants of the ABX who are left to extract the country anytime, and we are all on standby. So it could also be possible that maybe these ABX people could have found us as a, as a community that is already dissatisfied with the government, and they use their sentiments and feelings and say, look here, if, for example, we took on power, we would be able to sort out your issues. It is also possible that these ABF remnants could have joined the population. And you know, this is the population that flushed out ABF with little assistance from government. But now it's the same population that government is underrating their energies and efforts. So the ABF could have possibly joined the population who are already looking and use the game to achieve some point. So this is a key issue. They wouldn't be able to barracks and I'm a barracks and police. They had the capacity of going to homes of the neighbors who are the other tribe. A matter beyond the tribe, a matter that is not subject. So it could be possible to thank you some wrong statements to have the population of the city Yes. This is the city for all the actors, government partners, and in the same investigative mechanism, to be able to find out the good causes all right, and, and now w let's take a look at uh, some of the responses. In this whole mix-up of issues, uh, the king of the Renzururu Kingdom, that is in Western Uganda, also did come out uh, to, to mention exactly what he thought that the government was doing. And he said that, you know, the government saying that they want to uh, go directly at one of the cultural leaders was not right. And uh, we also have the Inspector General of Police, uh, that is uh, Kale Kaihura, who also came out to give his side of, of the story. Now we have these uh, bites for you and just take a look at what the King and the IGP said uh, before we can continue to speak to Winnie. The police, the army, they are coming to attack the palace to pick up the Musenga until we find it very difficult that that could cause another bloodshed. So it's a combination of two. Genocidal, this is genocidal plan, plans and an act of war on the state. So these are serious matters, not, not to be glossed over. So obviously, that's why we are here. Uh, and uh, we shall we have to get to the bottom of this. Because it would be dangerous for the country that uh, such a evil characters uh, remain un undetected. Our business is to get to the bottom of this terrible, terrible nani, business that happened here. Whoever was, was involved must explain. I have, uh, we are doing a lot of, uh, a lot of nani, investigations. I have got a team of, from Professional Standards Unit, from our Human Resource uh, Directorate. Where, where are the weaknesses? Unless he's guilty conscious. And this is something he, he knows, he knows that, that we don't know. There's information that links them to what happened. So they, 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 owe, they, owe, they, owe, they, owe, they owe us an explanation. I don't think anybody can surprise us at all, including ADF. And those are the words of the Inspector General of Police in Uganda, Major General Kale Kaihura. And he's saying, you know, there's, there's just not 
something that's there's something that's just not right and uh, when he says that he's linking this to the cultural leaders then probably they're also linking that to the reports that they are receiving as security agencies something that of course continuously uh, goes to be denied by the cultural leader himself you heard him speak now we're going to take a break and we'll be back uh, still to speak to Winnie uh, Winnie Kiza who is the woman member of parliament for Kasese district which is one of the districts that has been affected by uh, these clashes in the western part of Uganda. So do stay with us. We'll be back. We're discussing the Renzori killings in Western Uganda that have left over 100 people dead. And of course, this has been attributed to tribal clashes. But now, politicians and members of parliament uh, in the House from that part of the country are saying a, a better investigation needs to be done to, to know exactly who is behind these attacks because they're also being linked to rebels from the Democratic Republic of Congo, that is, the Allied Democratic Forces. And uh, we did speak to the woman member of parliament, Winnie Kiza, to give her view on what she thinks about these clashes or attacks. And she did mention that, you know, the government is not really paying attention to other factors like the ADF or maybe any other factors that could be attributed to this. And uh, we're seeing the same coming in from uh, the opposition parties in the country, that is the Democratic Party or DP uh, has appealed to the government to institute an independent commission of inquiry into to investigate and come out with a detailed report of what exactly happened in Western Uganda. And according to the party secretary general, that is Mathas Nsubuga, he says that the public wants to know what prompted the killings and also the attacks on the government security agencies. Because in all of this, we've seen uh, soldiers, we've seen policemen, as well as civilians being killed, including the attackers as well. So the exchange has been all between these uh, various groups. But now let's take a look at some of the responses that are coming through, uh, through Twitter under the hashtag Renzori Killings. SVETS M1 is saying, a lot of deep-rooted problems seem like the same in all African nations, which is very sad. And Mwinzi Joseph is saying, um, I salute Museveni for the actions he took to save the people by deploying the army. And we also have Joseph Kamau who is saying looks like land is very emotive, not only in Africa, but look at what is happening in Gaza. Uh, he associates that to what's happening in Gaza. And we have Richard who is saying uh, this can be attributed to the Museveni's regime. The fact that he's not a democratic leader, people may be revolting. And SVETS M1 once again comes up, well, talking about the other segments of the show. And, uh, well, there's more responses here. We're having uh, one coming in from Richard, who is saying, at this point in time, we want to know why does government keep on giving false information that the attacks were tribal, uh, were tribal conflicts, yet the mass killings happened only in on one single tribe. So if they were tribal clashes, why not explain why other tribes were not affected by this? And we have another here who says, when people say that these were tribal conflicts, they are wrong, for we have evidence that there was no single other tribe that was killed in that saga. Why can only one side lose people during a scuffle like this? So there could be something more behind this. And well, we're trying to also get to the Uganda Law Society Secretary General, that is Nicholas Opio, to give his view on this. Uh, the killings in Western Uganda are also being linked to similar killings in Northern Uganda, where we had a lot of people dying uh, before the Lord's Resistance Army uh, also insurgency did come up that was decades ago and uh, those killings of course merged with what has recently happened in western uganda could be something uh, for a discussion but what is yet to come out is the investigations uh, that are meant to be given out either by one of the non-government organizations or civil society in this case uh, who are meant to take the front lead in finding out who could be behind these attacks and well we've come to the end of the show thank you all for your contributions and the conversation continues online. Uh, this is also being linked to the so many clashes that do happen amongst African countries. We've seen what has happened in South Sudan. We've seen what is still happening in the Central African Republic, where people continue to fight along religious and tribal lines. 
So Western Uganda might also not be left out on this one. But well, my name is Joy Doreen Bira. Let's keep the discussion going on Twitter under the hashtag Renzori Killings or Africa Speaks. For now, have a good afternoon and God bless. <laughs>